In this video, we will learn about ClickHouse's aggregation states. Now, the idea here is that we're storing the intermediate state rather than the raw values primarily so that we can save space, which is important when you're dealing with huge volumes of data. So to save intermediate state, we use a state combinator, which could be unique state to store a count of unique values or some state to store a running count. And then to get the underlying result from that state, we use a merge combinator like unique merge or some merge. So we're going to have a look at how this works using the Wikimedia recent changes feed, which we can see on the screen at the moment. And we're going to copy the data portion of this message. And then we're going to come over to my terminal and paste that in. And we'll run it through JQ and have a look at what we're working with. So you can see here the JSON messages that we've got. There's a meta section at the top underneath there. We've got a topic. If you look down a little bit outside the meta, we've got a title and a title URL. If we then scroll down the screen a little bit, we've got a timestamp and a user, and there are a bunch of other fields as well. Let's go over to a different tab and we'll launch ClickHouse. And then we're going to create a database called Wiki. And then we're going to switch over to that database. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is create a table called WikiQ. We'll map all the fields that we just saw in our JSON message. The engine for this table is going to be Kafka. We'll point it at the broker. Our topic is called wiki underscore events. We'll create a consumer group and then we'll tell it you're going to be dealing with JSON messages. So it's the JSON each row format. Next, we need to decide which of the fields we're going to use. So for this video, we're going to keep track of the number of updates that are being made the unique users that are making those changes and the unique pages on a per minute basis. So let's first store some of the fields from the raw events so that we have something to compare the aggregation state approach against. So we're going to create a table called raw events. We're going to have a date time. We'll have a title URL. We'll have a topic and we'll have a user. It's going to be a merge tree engine and we're going to order the data by date time. Let's next create a materialized view to write to that raw events table. We'll call the to date time function to convert our timestamp to a date time. We'll get the title URL. We'll then use tuple element to pull out the topic from meta. Then we'll get the user and we're going to be querying that wiki queue Kafka engine table. And we'll also filter it so that we get rid of any empty title URLs. We're now going to create a aggregation state table. So we'll call that one by minute. We'll again use the date time. Then our next field is going to be users. And the type of that one is going to be aggregate function. And then it will be unique and then string. Now, unique means we're keeping track of unique values. And then the string is, well, what's the type of the value? So in this case, users are string. So that's why we've got the string. For pages, we're going to be keeping track of the title URL. So that's also going to be an aggregate function, unique string. But for updates, it's going to be slightly different. So that's going to be an aggregate function with a sum. So we're keeping track of like a running count. And then we'll use a uint32 as the type. And then the type of this engine is going to be aggregating merge tree. Now that engine alters the logic for data parts merging. So ClickHouse replaces all rows with the same order key with a single row within the data part that stores a combination of states of aggregate functions. And so in this, in this case, our sorting key is going to be date time as well. And again, let's create a materialized view to populate that table. So we're going to call the to start of minute function on the date time. We'll then call, use the unique state function. So remember, remember that's the state combinator that we talked about on the user. And that's our users field. We'll use unique state again on the title URL. So we're getting the state for unique titles. And then for the update, so that's our next one, it's going to be a sum state. And we're just going to pass in the number one. Uh, in here. And then we're going to be querying the raw events table. OK, so now we're ready to put some data into Red Panda. So we're going to first query the recent changes feed. We'll use awk to pull out the data portion of the message. We'll use jq to set it up nicely as a key value pair. And then we'll use kcat to put the data into the broker. Now we're going to leave that running for a while so that we've got a reasonable amount of data loaded. So let's imagine it's now one hour later and we're ready to query the data. So let's write our first query. So we're going to say select date time. We're then going to use the unique merge function on users. So remember, the merge function is for querying the intermediate state to get the underlying value. So that's going to be for, for users. We'll do the same thing for pages. And then for the updates, we're going to use the sum merge function instead. And we're going to be querying our by minute table. And then let's return the results from there. And so you can see we've got the by minute, minute by minute. 
we can see the number of users, unique users who made changes, the number of unique pages that were changed, and then the total number of updates that were made. Let's now do a quick check of those numbers against the raw data. So we'll first put our initial query into a CTE called aggregate, and let's just tab the everything so it looks a bit nicer. And then we're gonna write a second CTE called raw. And so that one's gonna to go to start of minute on the date time. We're gonna count distinct users, count distinct title URLs, and then just an overall count from raw events. And then we're gonna write a query that gets the date time, gets the each of the values from the aggregate state table, each of the values from the raw table, and then we'll join the aggregate and raw tables together on the date time column. And you can see we get back the now minute by minute, and we can see on the left-hand side, we've got the aggregate state computed values, and on the right-hand side, we've got the raw computation, and those numbers are exactly the same. So that's working perfectly well. So we're storing this state for these metrics grouped by minute, but what's kind of fun is that we can also group the data by any coarser time packet. So for example, we could write a query that says, I'm gonna group it by every five minutes instead of by every one minute. So we can write that. Again, we're gonna use the unique merge functions to get the users and the pages. And again, some merge to get the updates from the by minute table and we can get the top 10. And you can see here it's chunked by five minutes instead of one. So 11.15, 11.10, 11.05 and so on. We can also tweak that to say, I wanted to do 10 minutes instead. And as you can see now we've got 10 minute chunks of time. Now, at the beginning, I mentioned that the reason that we might wanna use this aggregate state approach is because it reduces the amount of space that's taken. So let's have a look at the systems table to see whether we've managed to achieve that. So we're gonna get the table, we'll get the size, and then we'll get the total number of rows, and then we're gonna filter it so we get raw events and by minute tables. And you can see it comes back by minute, it's just over 500 KB. The raw events is four megs, it's about seven, eight times different. And you can also see the number of rows is significantly less in by minute. So if you liked this video, you might also like this one up here where we learned all about ClickHouse's aggregate combinator functions.